So hello everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are here with Daniel Moreno. Um, I'm going to be introducing him briefly for uh, people that are outside of the school. My name is Guillermina Noel and I am the, the head of Design Management International Bachelor Program at the Hochschule Lucerne or the Lucerne University of Applied Sciences and Arts. Um, so let us introduce our guest today. Uh, Daniel is an economist and has a master in urban development. He is also pursuing his PhD in architecture and urban studies at the Pontificia Universidad Católica of Chile. He works with interdisciplinary teams on multiple urban and territorial planning projects for the Chilean governments at different scales. Um, he applies system thinking when working. So I think that for our students, it's going to be very interesting to see how he's doing that. And he's going to be sharing with us three cases, uh, real cases that he has worked with in Chile. So Daniel, thank you very much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. And the floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Guillermina. Um, I'm going to share a presentation and have a, a couple of interactions with you. Um, and I'm going to start right now. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the role of designers in public policies based on three Chilean experiences. This is the agenda for today's presentation or dialogue. And we are going to talk about the problems of, of land use planning, also about the contribution of design and the role of designers in these, in these issues. Then about the NUGOT, which is the research team that I belong to, some things about Chile to introduce you to the country. Then we are going to talk about the three experiences in detail. And finally, the learnings that remain from these experiences. Well, let's begin. Currently, the territory can be defined as a limited social space occupied and used by different social groups because of the implementation of their territory or the field of power over a space exercised by the dominant institution, as Capel would say. Determination of the predominance and configuration of the territories is also a cultural construction where social practices take place with different interests, different perceptions, valuations, and territorial attitudes. These generate relationships of complementation, of reciprocity, but also of confrontation, a construction that is sensible to changes according to the time and social dynamics. Let's start with a simple example. In a center territory, there is permitted use that, is, that has been installed for some time, a uh, pig sty, a place where pigs are kept. Given the need of housing, it is planned to build a residential complex of houses. Then we need to find an available land. Um, as occurring in different uh, countries, the cheapest one is selected, which is located at a safe distance from the pigsty according to the developer. When this residential complex of houses begins to be inhabited, the problems begin. Would you guess which one will be the main one? Students, you can write in the chat or in the... I think that the chat will be the best if you want to say which are your guests. And Daniel, the options to clarify are health. Um... Not only uh, what we, which kind of problems do you uh, think that could happen in okay. these two, two land uses? We have one uh, comment that is stench. Yeah, okay. Noise. The noise. Okay. Odor. Odor, the smell. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. The, the smell and also the flies, mainly in the summertime. And this is a, a real case that I, I could see and experience here in Chile. So the people who now live there demand that the state move or remove the pigsty. The owners of the pigsty claim that they do not have to move 
because they comply with all the regulations and have always been there without problems. So what would you do as a state? How to anticipate or mediate such a situation? Probably you can think of several solutions like, like technological solutions or probably move the houses or move the pigsty. But you must understand that many things come to play in here. The problem of housing, the productive sector, the distribution of the territory, the externalities, and so on. So each one of these elements represents in a system. Therefore, the territory is composed of various systems that in turn contain both human and non-human actors that interact with each other for the better or, in this case, for the worse. For this reason, land planning encounters problems like this daily, mainly linked to the tensions and conflicts generated by the occupation and use of the land, where there is constant competition between people, between companies, elements of nature, and so on. Even the possible solution also contain complex problems. The solution has been proposed for various disciplines that are often biased by their own objectives or needs or agendas. Surely, from a purely economic approach, production will be privileged and the houses will be removed. And if not, from a purely social approach, housing will be privileged. But this means that holistic and integral development tends to be distorted once certain uses of the territory are prioritized to the detriment of others. The construction of instruments to plan the territory also qualifies as complex systems. Since many times there are no tools that facilitate the interdiscipline and dialogue between them or between the actors involved. So many times the population and the natural elements are left aside, which means that the complexity of the problem can increase if their needs or even possible solution proposed by themselves are not listened to. So the question remains as to what with the possible solutions to the disputes over the territory understanding that is a system or system, a concept that is taken from, from Luras. And that is the territory is a container of related systems whose limits are exceed and form a system by themselves, a complex system. So there is a need for a for an intermediary, a facilitating and integrating actor or factor. And through the experience or my experience, the design has become this essential factor that has not been valued in land planning. It must be understood that design is an interdisciplinary tradition of learning, which is focused on the user and goes beyond the generation of a project or a service, as Ryan has said. Design is a synthetic and constructive process to elaborate new elements that represent a solution. Design also intentionally is the ability to shape values and ideas into design products and services. It seeks to create innovation and functionality in interventions to address complex problems like the land planning use. The territory as a system of systems implies a change of mentality, which means giving importance to each part of the system and its interactions, as Selvanson maintains. The design, therefore, offers a holistic approach, which allows all the actors to be considered, even those, those who do not have their own voice, like the nature by themselves, and the various forms or interaction that may exist. This approach has made it possible to understand that design is an interdisciplinary facilitator within territorial planning. And with this, it allows to go further to transdisciplinarity, breaking down the barriers imposed by each discipline and even questioning its own methods when contemplating other points of view. So the role of designers is very important. They are basically agents of change since it is one of the few disciplines that can articulate all the elements of a system, including the elements of analysis and their approach methods. Design also make it possible to give the role of designer to actors who do not belong to this discipline because it teaches them the skills to understand and develop their own designs. In other words, design empowers actors, empowers people who have been neglected by traditional territorial planning. 
It allows technically leveling the capacities of the actors and allows reinterpreting the systems, their elements, and their interactions. So understanding the problem and the role of the design, I'm going to tell you about the research group with, to which I belong. It's a, a very short um, parenthesis. This group proposes the analysis, the evaluation, the prospecting of issues related to governance and land use, understanding that the process in the centralization and the actions leading to establishing change in the normative, in the land normative and regulatory framework on land use uh, also represent a, a system, a complex system. It is made up of an interdisciplinary team that includes architects, designers, economists, geographers, and urban planners. These are the, the core of the group, but there are more people in the, in the group. Um, this is only the, the principal phases. It includes also professors, professionals from the Institute of Urban and Territorial Studies, the School of Design, and the consulting firm of the Faculty of Architecture, Design, and Urban Studies of the Catholic University of Chile. In recent years, planning approach led by our director, Arturo Llana, and the design approach led by Catherine Mollenhauer have converged in several projects. These approaches have allowed us to develop a holistic work and establish new mentalities in ourselves. The results of this comprehensive work uh, can be found in the experience that I will talk about in a few moments, in a few minutes, sorry. In fact, uh, thanks to the Nouveau and Catherine and the 10 Annual Systemic Design Symposium of the Systemic Design Association, that I have to be able to contact Guillermina and, and to do this, this talk. So thank, thank the design too for this. Well, well, now let's talk about Chile. Um, let me ask you a couple of questions. What do you know of this country? Have you visited yet? I think you can write in the chat. Lynn says yes. Silva is saying I haven't. Deborah, no, but Maybe. I would love to. Several times. Oh, Jorge nice. says several <laughs> times. Jorge is from Argentina. So, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and Marina, I haven't. Mm -hmm. Noah, new president since last year. Yes. <laughs> Good, Noah. Okay. Shall not yet visit, but in for the mountains. The mountains, mountains are yeah. very nice. Los Andes. Yes. Well, Chile is a country in South America. It is famous for being a very long and narrow country, bordering with the Pacific Ocean and the Andes mountain range. And these mountains that Jan uh, have said. And it's also famous for the geographical uh, diversity of its territory. You can see this in, uh, in these pictures that I have taken over the country. And it's also famous for the um, copper and also the wine. But more recently, because of the social outbreak, the constitutional process, and the vaccination scheme. This adverse context has warned of the deep inequalities that the country has, but you, you can escalate these inequalities to the entire world. Yeah, and this, the, the main problem is the accumulation of wealth and the conflicts of interest behind it. So a problem behind this problem is the land use planning, or rather the land disorder resulting from human activities. The territory itself is organized, but it is us and our activities that generate this disorder due to the conflict of interest. Therefore, we are responsible as humans for finding the solutions. Based on what I talk about uh, uh, to, to, to till this point, I will present three experiences of studies and projects for the public sector where the design has been fundamental. For each one, I will talk about um, the general problem, the objectives, the methodologies, and the contributions of designs uh, to the experience. 
To start with the first experience, I must tell you about the planning uh, of the territory in Chile, the system. Uh, this is the general scheme of land planning. Uh, we can observe various national policies and plans headed by the national land use policy, as well as the main institutions and regulations. We can also observe the policies, plans, and instruments at the regional level which is the interme intermediate scale of planning and political administrative division. And finally, the intercommunal uh, and communal, which are the smallest scales and correspond to the smallest political administrative division. However, there has been evidence of lack of articulation between national policies and local and regional planning instruments. In this experience, in particular, we pointed to integrate the national rural development policy with regional and local instruments or planning instruments. So the objective of the study is to develop a methodological kit which contains on the one hand, a guide and a toolbox for its application at the regional and commune level, which guides the incorporation of the, of the perspective and the guidance of the national um, rural development policy and generate um, also a, a platform where, where this can, can be seen. The results obtained from the analysis uh, of these instruments revealed that there is uh, currently a low approximation of the fundamentals of the conceptualization and guidance by areas proposed by this national policy. So it is urgent to correct the course of the design process. Uh, also to the process of elaboration and implementation of these planning instruments that by their nature are called to direct regional and local public policies towards a more integrated and modern vision of the rural development. In fact, we published a paper on this focused only on human, communal development plans mm -hmm. in, a, in a magazine in a, yeah, in a magazine here in, in Chile. To identify the factors that favor and hinder the incorporation of the guidance of the national rural development policy in the planning instruments, uh, we use a co-creation methodology between the consulting and academic experts, also us, the research team, and users of the consulting product, the final users. That is the contribution of the design in both in the application of the methods and also in the very construction of the final product. As a part of methodological strategy, it was considered to incorporate service design methods and techniques for the design of public services in order to generate two methodological kits in the context of the implementation process of this national policy. The design of services applied to the generation of tools for public services or to their improvement. Consider users, expert, and or team as key actors in the process. These co-creation methods and techniques used during the process allow the participants uh, involved to have a systemic view of the problem, considering all its perspectives. This helps the team to consider the knowledge of all, all the actors and the wisdom provided by them through the process for generating the solution proposal, helping to minimize the risk associated with the design and implementation of the new solution. The methodological strategy for the design of the kit is based on the stage that the triple diamond service design from of the public innovation laboratory. Um, for this experience, uh, we developed four of the five of the six stages of this methodology. And um, these stages were the redefinition of the problem linking to the first diamond, uh, the development of the methodological kit proposal, prototyping, testing, iteration of the methodological kit, and link it to the second diamond, and uh, the design of the beta solution of the toolkit to move towards the pilot plan prior the implementation of the plan itself. In each stage, we made workshops using criteria and co-creation techniques, such as the distribution of participants in groups, um, look for uh, representativeness of the diversity of institutional organization in each workshop, 
the design of instruments for horizontal participation and facilitation of the discussion with each group trying to record um, and recollect all the, all the contents discussed and collect them in different instruments designed for each activity in particular. The applied methodology allowed, allowed us to develop a conceptual proposal previously to the, to the toolkit themselves. This proposal recognized three types of users that must be served by the methodological kit. These users are uh, the local level professional, which are municipal officers and uh, related institutions that are involved in the process of preparing and communal development plans. Uh, also the professionals at the regional level, which are officials of the regional governments and related institutions that intervene the process of preparing regional development strategies. And finally, professional consultants, which are experts who are hired to prepare these instruments. This type of user state that at the time of incorporating this national rural development policy in the process of development territorial planning and strategy instruments, it is possible to detect uh, some obstacles and facilitators, but we can resume them in two, two main uh, areas. The conceptual dimension of the policy linked to the, the definition of rural territory, the new rural paradigm, and the, purpose, the purposes of the policy. And in the other hand, operational dimension of the policy linked to the objectives, to the areas, to the guidance, and even their governance. So the co-creation work allowed that the proposal uh, identifies a diversity of information organizing by its levels uh, and incorporated in, in the following way. First, we found out that there is an information level one that is related to aspects that can be addressed in the medium and long term, but that they are not part of the methodological kit because they are structural use, issues identified as technical and financial uh, capacities, management of the preparation process, the consultative nature of the instrument, the political considerations and the intersectorality. The information level two uh, that is related to conceptual elements and criteria, uh, this must be made available to, to the users of the toolkit. Uh, and that's why uh, this information is contained in the introduction to the guide to help the user journey or the process of development the instrument. And finally, the information level three that is related to operational and methodological instrument elements that must be used by the user before, during, and after the process of the elaboration of a planning instrument. So in this experience, uh, two toolkits were developed uh, that would allow generating a positive impact of, on users. In other words, having these characteristics, first, simple, in a language for easy and quick understanding by the user, practical in its application to facilitate the user's operation, synthetic in its construction so that it contains what is essential for the user, self-explanatory in its use for autonomous management by the user, inclusive in its instruments so that it promotes the participation of all actors considering the condition, flexible, in its structure so that it adapts to the different characteristics of the users and the needs of the territories. And finally, binding in its, in its deployment for a better connection with other levels related to the planning and strategic development process. Also to consider in its design the use of definitions, recommendations, suggestion schemes, infographics, templates with instruments and so on. So these guides, are also intended to include visual elements. You must understand that visual practice and thinking give big advantage, uh, advantage for accessing, internalizing, and communicating complex information, as Sebanso say. And that is the first experience. The second experience uh, is also related to, to the first one, due to the problems that exist in the planning of the rural world in Chile. The planning scheme in Chile, as we said, as we see before, as we saw before, um, also reveals that the territories that have been most planned are the cities, not the rural world. 
which is why the focus has also been on measuring the quality of life in urban areas, but not in the urban areas, not in the rural areas, sorry. In more recent years, the importance of planning rural areas has been recognized, not only because um, they occupy the 83% of the country surface, that, that's a lot, but also because they are home to various human and non-human land uses. But a great challenge has been to measure their quality of life through the large information gaps that exist in these territories. Another challenge is knowing what exactly we are going to be to, to measure. So the National Rural Development Policy has succeeded in proposing the new rural paradigm and has managed to establish the basis for measuring the quality of life in these areas. Therefore, this experience has the general objective of providing, adjusting, and validating the indicators proposed by the Rural Life Quality Indicator System to establish the degree of compliance with the co objectives set out by this national policy associated with improvements in the quality of life in rural areas, in addition to developing a platform, a platform for visualizing the indicators. To meet this main objective, the, we made uh, the following task. First, a review of proposed indicators through the comparison with other national systems. Then an adjustment proposals to add or subtract indicators to the current system because we work based on uh, an honor system. And after an analysis of the feasibility of the indicators, then a proposal for defining the quality of rural life consistent with the guidance of this national rural development policy, join the definition of the experts of each area of this policy that participate in this validation process. And finally, working session with expert teams, institutional counterparts, and a participatory, well, several participatory webinars. To resume the process uh, in numbers, uh, it went from 162 indicators originally proposed to 200, and 60, 16 in revi revised indicators, then to uh, 162 pertinent indicators, to 59 feasible indicators, and finally to 57 indicators adjust with workshops. In between, there were different analyses with reference criteria, whether they measure quality of life or not, availability, accessibility, coverage, interscality, and complexity. Also, we make a manual, um, that describes the calculation procedure for each indicator. And finally, a definition of quality of life was widely discussed in the workshops. To identify how measure the quality of life or rural life from the same rurality, we use the same device, or same service design triple diamond methodology, with, but with, with some consideration. First, we redefine the problem to the question, what are the indicators that can measure the quality of life? Second, we review the criteria used for the construction of, this, this, of the set of indicators. Third, adjust the definition of rural quality of life in a beta version. Fourth, validate the new set of indicators according to the definition uh, uh, placed in the policy. And five, deliver the set of definitive indicators. In each stage, we made uh, digital workshops using criteria and co-creation techniques like the previous experience. Uh, we invite a different type of experts, experts in the areas in the National Rural Development Policy, bringing in mind the indicator defined in each area, experts in data and information management, as well as geographic information systems, and experts from public services belonging to universities and from private world linked to the rural world. The methodology then considered the representativeness of the various institutions and organizations to have diverse participation and facilitating this discussion. To do this, our team focused on applying a co-creation in each instance. The methodical design of the workshop considered basically two activities. Uh, the first activity is so for the participant to learn about and discuss the definition of rural quality of life proposed by the team. And the second activity intended for the participant to represent their vision of the proposal indicators. 
proposed indicators regarding their relevance and feasibility to form the system. For the platform, the digital platform, we did various workshops. First one, a co-creation workshop with the Office of Agricultural Studies and Policies of the Ministry of Agri Agriculture to determine the needs and expectations of the, the institution, of this institution. Then a workshop with the National Institute of Statistics to determine the technical limits of the platform. And also we made uh, three workshops with three different type of users identified during this process. The decision makers, the analysts and researchers, and the citizens. At this stage of the consultancy, also we made a participatory webinar um, that allowed the 250 people to know, analyze, and comment the system and the indicators. And also during this webinar, the participants expressed their doubts, their concerns, and opinions. And more than 300 questions and comments were raised, some of which could be answered by, by the project manager. And the rest, to the limited time of the event, uh, we collected in a document of, in, of questions that were answered and sent in, in some days later. The webinar turned out to be a space of a participatory and inclusive and traceable co-creation. As a method, it allowed the creation of dialogues in an environment of respect and listening. So the potential users will recognize the design of the indicator system and the result of the co-creative process where their questions, their experiences, their convictions and opinions were considered the central element and protagonist of each uh, event. Because a solution that recognizes and collects and reflects the diversity of knowledge and values of its users reduces the uncertainty in its adoption and contributes to su successful implementation as a public policy. And we can see now also the, the, the digital platform that also considered as a product of this uh, experience. The tier experience is also associated with the planning system in Chile. Every 10 years by law, the regional development strategies must be updated. Um, planning itself seeks to generate internally towards the future, a fact that collides with the same uncertainty of not knowing exactly what is going to happen, like the pandemic, or what is planned, if is this planet is going to work or not. So the objective of this experiment has been to update this regional development strategy in the Los Lagos region, a territory located in the south of the country, which is continental and also have an insular lands and is the gateway to the Patagonia. Uh, and we have also uh, developed all of this in a context of great uh, uncertainty, that is the pandemic. And also we work in Santiago, is, is very far from, from this region. Um, actually, we are in the center of the, of the country and this region is in the south and also has a, a lot of tourism there, like nature and, uh, and is the gateway to the Patagonia. So it's, it's really beautiful. So this experience, uh, which about to, is, is, about to, is about to end because we are not uh, finished yet, has a series of phases or stages. First, the first one corresponded to the analysis of the previous strategy uh, uh, to identify the issues that should be strengthened or modified in the new instrument. A second one, uh, we made a diagnosis of the territorial, territorial reality or the regional reality knowing the strengths and the weaknesses, as well as the changes and the objectives. In the third, we define the guidance, uh, which the objectives that made up this strategy are prioritized. Um, in the fourth, we made the management plan to implement the different public policies to meet the objectives of the strategy and the method uh, to periodically um, evaluate the process of the instrument to implementation of this instrument. And in the last, well, we are developing now the communication plan and the final document. The design challenge here has been to empower the people who inhabit the territory so that they have a direct influence 
on its planning, understanding by inhabitants, the citizens, the key actors from public and private sectors. This implies training them and generating instance of participation according to this uh, adverse context that is the, the pandemic. In the first stage, with the aim of socializing the beginning of the study and the results, we developed three digital participation activities uh, and the web platform channel. For the first activity, we use a combination of virtual platforms, Zoom for communication and Miro for collaborative work. Probably you know this better than I. Um, the participants spoke for each uh, of the five dimensions of the previous general strategy, that is uh, human development, and quality of life, uh, regional sustainability, um, multicultural uh, community, democracy, and regional governance, and regional uh, co competitiveness. Here, uh, they analyze their perception of the previous instrument, its achievements, and also uh, its depths. We use the methodology analysis of the regional rural context of the practical guide for integrated the national rural development policy in the regional de development strategy. That is the first experience that I presented. So uh, I'm glad that we use the, these experiences and uh, in which we establish the state situation of the rural territory of the region. The guide uh, allowed to propose the use of the rural territorial, territorial map to carry out the uh, preliminary regional analysis that we made with these actors. Uh, the second activity uh, was an online workshop where we asked more and less achievement aspects where the region should move forward and a preliminary definition of the objectives. The third activity consisted of a regional webinar and that allowed a bidirectional interaction between the team, the, some guests, and a total of 101 participants. During this webinar, uh, we promote a safe, broad, and democratic uh, dialogue space, um, constituting an instance where the diversity of opinions and values of those involved was recognized and reflected in the results. From the point of view of the methodological strategy, the webinar uh, was a space of citizen participation which allow the dialogue, the dialogue through the significant and meaningful exchange of perceptions, experiences, and opinions. Also, we use uh, online surveys and the participants question in this dialogue space. This webinar was led by, the, by four personalities from the region who were invited to talk about the future or their perspective, the, their perspective of future of the Lagos region in the next 10 years. In the second stage, as a part of preparation of the diagnosis, we made 30 communal workshops and 16 participatory webinars in four in provincial areas, seven in strategic zones, and five in urban areas. The objective was carrying out the, uh, an internal and external and an external analysis that allows knowing the characteristics of the territory and its environment in order to establish an ad adequate and achievable goals for the region. And in total, more than 2,000 people participate in these uh, uh, webinars. For the convocation of, to the workshops and the webinars, we use uh, various databases inviting the inhabitants to participate, uh, complementing the dissemination with various media, such as radio, that is very important in the rural world, and also social networks. For the development of the workshops, we use another uh, virtual um, tool. Um, we use, uh, we design virtual canvases for the stormborn environment, probably you also know it. Uh, where the participants carry out a SWOT analysis, recognizing the characteristics of the territory and its surroundings to, uh, surrounding to establish the appropriate and achievable goals of the regions. And the participants were able to identify and recognize the region weaknesses that must be addressed, the region strengths, the opportunities that can be exploited for its development, and 
the threats that region should overcome in the framework of the next regional strategy. They were also able to discuss the most and least achievement aspect in the last 10 years, which it means they evaluate the, the last uh, strategy. And finally, the participants conclude on what should be main uh, adequate and achievable challenge for a better development of the region. Also, we made a, a webinar workshop where the participants shared their different experiences, convictions, and also opinions on the first proposal of the vision and the strategy guidance of the regional strategy, as well as proposed actions for its implementation. The design of the program uh, and the use of the technologies during this webinar allowed attendants to uh, actively participate. For this, the participation methodology began with an introduction focusing on the importance of this participatory instance for updating this instrument. Then the moderator proceeded to explain the methodology of the workshop, indicate some tips to ensure that everyone could participate in it. And the vision of the strategy was validated from a regional perspective through a real-time survey from the same Zoom platform where the participants then complemented their responses through the chat which means qualitative and quantitative analysis. The moderator commented on the results and the audience continued to interact through the chat, giving their opinions and comments. The responses of the participants were collected by a team uh, in the backstage of the, of the Zoom uh, for further processing and integration in, in the results. So every, every information and every data was collected. Then the eight strategic guidelines defined for the new strategy uh, were presented, explaining each one of them. Uh, the moderator asked them to pronounce uh, the four highest priority guidance for the region, and the participants are their preference and answer uh, of the participants were also collected by, by the team. And then we presented the priority issues collected in the workshop of the, um, of the communes, of the strategic zones, and the urban areas. And the audience was asked to vote for the four priority issues in the region. And finally, the audience was asked to pronounce on the initiatives that should be prioritized for the province, for the strategic zone, or for the urban zone. So we use a presentation where, where some examples were offered, and the audience was invited to leave their proposal for a specific initiatives for priority issues. The third stage consisted on the adjustment of and validation of, of the vision and guidance process that inputs for the definition of guidelines, uh, objectives, goals, and indicators. And all the previous inputs uh, have made it possible to define around 41 topics distributed in eight strategic guidelines, linking to these topics a total of 169 objectives, which have been analyzed in their importance and transcendence, transcendence with respect to international uh, commitments, such as the SDG objectives, approach from the regional institutionality, the analysis of critical decision factors, the objectives proposed uh, from the national territory planning use policy or land use policy, and the challenge posed in the regional government program. The fourth stage closes a process of survey, validation, prioritization, and selection of objectives and initiatives that should be constituted the action plan that guides the Lagos region in the next 10 years. This was done uh, in uh, intersectorial working groups with the ministerial agencies. So in resume, uh, the foregoing implies work that, a work that began uh, with workshops done within our team and the regional counterpart, then a massive inclusion of citizens and key actors, and finally, the participation of the central government by sectors. So this was a big experience of empowerment through design. With these three experiences, I want to point out three main learnings. First, um, technological innovation is not requested, um, but rather an innovation of meaning using a strategic and systemic oriented design that gives meaning and coherence to the solutions of, for the end users. Also, applied system designs uses visual thinking, mainly with methods and final products. 
also analyze complex problems at the territory, and it allows to understand systems and is intent to give and share meaning and coherence. The shared experience also represents a system of solutions to the planning problems of the rural territorial system where design was a key factor. So the design allows co-creation, allows agents to relate, to relate, including decision makers, along with direct, indirect, and potential users in order to agree on interventions to transform the reality, to move from a current situation to a better one. So thank you, Design, for that. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Very nice talk, very nice um, cases that you share with us. I will ask the people in the webinar right now, if they have questions, you can write them down in the Q&A or in the chat, and we can start looking at them. Um, if you could identify the three most important things okay. as they come. First one uh, is the how the design um, change the or probably will change the 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 planning system by themselves because uh, um, it not only bring us the methodologies or methods or tools uh, but also uh, it helps to to understand the territory as a system. So this is a change of mentality, a change of, of thinking uh, in, in other disciplines that probably are used to a quantitative analysis and nothing else. Uh, not even um, thinking about the, the, the people or, or the land or even the natural attributes of the land. So, I think it's a, um, this one is uh, probably the, the most useful uh, or most important thing that you should take home, that design is not only uh, graphic design, uh, is, uh, it has a great potential, uh, it goes further. And in this, in this example of planning or, or land planning, uh, you can see the, and you can observe the, the, the big importance that design uh, um, um, contribute to these uh, processes uh, and land use instruments. And the second one is the, the empowerment. I think that design uh, make everyone a designer uh, because uh, design gives tools and give methodologies. And also in the webinars, we, we, we teach these tools uh, to different kind of users, uh, users that do not have uh, a whole knowledge of technology. So we we need to think in, in their 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 cap, uh, their cap capabilities or, uh, or or skills or, or lack of skills, and then bring them um, the skills that are required to to manage these these tools or applications. Uh, and then um, they finally use them as as they wish, as they as they will, and give us the the information, the opinions, or or the or the important things that they will they want to share with us. Because also we act as a, a direct uh, intermediator as designers, and we we need to to organize this information, to pass to, to an instrument that could be useful because um, none of this matter if the, we made an instrument and the instrument is a book that no one reads. So we need to, to make that um, the instruments useful and very friendly with all kinds of users and design has a big uh, um, um, potential to, to do that. Uh, and finally, uh, the interdisciplinarity of design is, um, I, I think, is very unique 
um, because uh, I don't know, uh, it connects different disciplines uh, and very, very different disciplines, uh, different approaches and uh, make you think about your own discipline. Mm -hmm. you, uh, make you think ab about questioning your own discipline, mm -hmm. your own approach, your own mentality. So it, it could help to pre break these, these limits, these discipline limits and work in a transdisciplinary uh, environment that is the next, is further that interdisciplinary. Good, thank you very much. I, I have a question. So um, Fernando Flores, who is a Chilean, I can see the light in the room going down. There you go, give me a second. <laughs> no <Okay>. movement. <laughs> Sorry about that. So Fernando Flores, who is also um, a Chilean, he used to be a minister in the cabinet of Ascende, uh, have a book, Conversations for Action. And in this book, one of the things he highlights is the difficulty of people to express their needs. So how, how is that you manage uh, in a topic so difficult like land use, and territory um, to help people articulate or reflect about what are their needs other than using visual tools. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a daily problem that we, we, we face as a, as a planner, um, but uh, with the design, um, as, as I said before, we give them tools to express. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, they probably conceive a land use as uh, a bad land use because of the externalities, but we also teach them um, and make them to, to, to establish the, the positive side of that use. Mm -hmm. So they, they think in, in another perspective of this use and probably uh, change or probably or, or even maintain uh, their their decision of, of or perception of this use. So um, this is about um, give the people the skills skills mm -hmm. to understand the whole system because you can you can analyze one thing uh, apart from the the whole mm -hmm. system uh, and. And the design also, um, and the on the, on the all the tools, um, allow us to to give them uh, the information that they need to understand the whole picture of the land. Not only they use their externalities, but uh, the relation with the other system, with the with, with the working system, for example, for the with the housing system, how they re relate. Um, how we can improve the relation because it's not a, a forbidden a, a land use and that's it. No, we can uh, change the relations. So to minimize the external light externalities or the problems caused by the use and um, probably uh, uh, search for, for more benefits uh, in the whole system, not in the in, not as a part or isolated part of a system. So yeah, I think the design um, yeah, help people to, to, to express the, the, their needs, mm -hmm. but express also in a different way, not only the need that I have personally, but the need that probably um, relates with the needs mm -hmm. to, of the other actors and uses in, the, in, in planning. Um, and I think that that's very important, not, not only focusing on the elements of the system, but also in the relations of the system. And, and probably the, the design uh, helped uh, people to, to understand that and to express uh, this one in a more complex way, but I think it's a, a better way that um, isolate the problem mm -hmm. by themselves. Good, thank you. Very interesting. Uh, we have a question for, uh, from Idoya. Can you, do you see it? Uh, let me, uh, from, from who? 
Idoya in the Q&A? Oh. I can, oh, sorry. I can read sorry. it aloud. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for your presentation. I was wondering how did your team manage to engage and keep active all the stakeholders, policymakers, citizens, other experts? And how did you manage the level of language or information so everyone could understand and equally participate? What type of methodologies you use? Well, uh, for maintain the, the, the engage and keep up with all the stakeholders, we maintain a, a continuous communication with all of them. Um, via personal meetings, in some cases, in the first experience, but uh, in, in the later one, that it was more complex because of the pandemic, uh, we also um, did a lot of, of uh, virtual meetings, not only that I show you, but also with, uh, with um, public and private uh, representative uh, people and with actors of the of the citizens, uh, representative of the citizens. So, uh, and we communicate them to, and we, we engage them to, to participate in the whole activity, in the whole activities, um, and also to, to participate in the web. And we also call it to, to, to invite them to the, to the activities. So uh, the, the main text is a constant communication mm -hmm. and, and finally, how do you manage the level of language? Well, uh, we simplify uh, every language. Uh, uh, the, 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 all the concepts that we use, we simplify, we put in a, a very simple language. And in, it was too complicated. We, are, we always add a definition also in a very simple language because we are leveling the skills. So it's important to put on uh, in the shoes of uh, a person that probably doesn't uh, uh, manage these, these concepts. And, um, and uh, or even if they don't, they, don't, they don't manage or even they don't want to, to learn. So we have to also motivate them mm -hmm. to, uh, we have to show them that uh, their participation has an impact on the mm -hmm. final product. And the final product also has to have a, a very friendly language uh, to see the participation reflected on them. So that was very important. Good, thank you. Idoya, did that answer your question? Thanks, okay. We are getting to uh, the hour, so I'm, I'm aware of time. What will be your advice for students? So there are, um, we have some students that they are doing their thesis. Um, so they are starting to map. Uh, what is the system that they are going to be confronting in the problem area that they selected? And we have students in the second year that are working with topics more related to sustainability. And we have students in the first year that are now um, starting to work more looking at organizations from a systemic point of view and relationships. What will be your advice for them? Well, um, get motivated first, obviously, but uh, consider all the actors, all the factors, all the interactions, even if you don't see them, probably is uh, also good advice to, to have a second lecture or a third lecture that probably sees the problem with another perspective. And also I will suggest that talk with other disciplines. Mm -hmm. Other disciplines obviously directed, uh, related to, to, to your problem, uh, but um, this will help a lot. This will help a lot to, to, to see the problem, the complex problem in a, in a more wide view and also to uh, to find a, a more uh, I don't know a more more uh, a better solution to to this problem, and um, also to work in paper and then to design in, in digital um, digital um, tools, um, work in paper that uh, that the people feel the. <laughs> The paper that the, what they are doing are are implicit in the process, 
and then you you can process it anyway. So well, in in the pandemic is is very difficult, but um, if you teach them the the tools and the and the and the, all the skills, probably they will feel the same. You know, that they will feel empowered to 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 support or to support your process of of the of the testing. So. I, I resume in that, keeping in mind the, all the actors, all the factors, all the interactions, work with different disciplines, and, uh, work with different point of views, mm -hmm. and uh, empower the people. That is very important. Good. Thank you very, very much for sharing with us your work. It has been a pleasure and a great learning experience. Thank you for listening. Thank you.